Okie dokie. Howdy, howdy. Hey, friends. It's your girl, May Wing It. Here, back with Homestuck. Um, so it's been a very long time since I played this. And by play, I mean read this. Um, when I was playing it originally, reading it originally, um, I was just doing it because it was supposed to be the prequel to this other game that I did end up playing called Den. My brain just totally froze. Anyway, um, ended up being one of the most popular videos on the channel. And a lot of people were saying that it was actually really good. Um, and that, you know, I was in for a ride. Uh, but it was so much reading. And knowing that it's longer than War and Peace was, was definitely a, uh, it's a big ask, you know? Um, but, you know, I've been thinking about it recently and really want to know what the hell happens because I reviewed, you know, what I went over in the last one. I don't know what happens. I'm kind of very, very confused. Um, like, I don't know what's going on aside from it, it is extremely meta, but I love it. Anyway, um, so I figured out where I left off last time. Mind you, last time was like a year and a half ago, <laughs> two years ago. Um, so I don't necessarily remember everything. But, you know, I, I rewatched my last video. Um, it's a little cringe, but, you know, what are you going to do? It's not like this isn't going to be cringy. Um, and I thought, yeah, let's, let's do it, you know? Like, let's just dive right in. Um, I don't think there's any sound. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that, which feels a little weird doing a video without sound. Um, if I remember, I'll try to put some sort of chill music in the background, but I'm probably not going to remember. I'm probably just going to upload this straight to YouTube. So sorry. Um, when I was doing this last time, I don't think I did voices. Like I did like a narrator voice, um, which I'm not going to do because most of this is just reading as a narrator. And, um, you know, I, I don't want my throat to just die. So... Um, I'm not going to attempt to recap because I don't know what's happening. But, uh, this is Rose. I'm currently playing as Rose. Um, oh, and again, like I said, this is sort of like a non-interactive story. Um, it's not a game. Um, it, it vaguely looks interactive. Like, it looks like a choose your own adventure sort of a story. Pretty sure you, you don't. It's just like a story that's online. It's like a story with gifts. Um, so, you know, it's, let's just hang out for a little bit and, and read a nice little story. I hope that is okay. I don't know. Um, I hope this is running well also because I tried playing something else earlier and it just wasn't working. Anyway, so now we're playing as Rose. So your other person is named something Egbert. John Egbert, I think. Then this is Rose something. And something's happening. I don't know. I don't know, it's very meta. Um, so, I'm going to read the narrator voice in my own voice. Because uh, there's only so long that you can read like this. And apparently last time that was an hour. So, yeah. You leave your bedroom. Hanging just next to your door in the hallway is a painting of an exquisite wizard. Your mother collects these awful things ironically. She must know how you detest them. I shouldn't be playing this today because I've been having trouble reading out loud all day. And there's no doubt in your mind she stores these dreadful things in the house to bother you. Down the hall to the right is the way to the observatory. Perhaps you'll be able to co connect from up there. Um, there's something about a storm and we have a program that Rose can run where she can like control reality. Sort of. Your mother's room is also in that direction. You'll have to watch your step. Tiptoe to the observatory. You look at these weird, uh, weird wizard paintings. You approach a juncture in the hallway. Beyond the juncture is, an, is the observatory. Cool. How many houses have an observatory in it? Sneak by. So you see how we're like, it, it. Oh, I don't know what that was. That was kind of creepy. Like it kind of looks like a choose your own adventure sort of a thing. But it, it isn't. You don't have job. You don't have options. But there are gifts, and I'm pretty sure the gifts weren't working last time, or something. Some things weren't working last time, and I thought it was a joke. Um, and then someone in the comments was like, no, you, your flash player wasn't working. And I had thought it was hilarious that 
like the joke was made that Flash was I don't know um, okay, this row, this door leads to the observatory. You haven't ventured up there in quite some time. Go through the door. Oh, it's scary. Why is the hallway outside? <laughs> the door opens to an exterior walkway leading to the observatory entrance. You've seen less inclement weather before. Oh, the things you'll do to help out a friend. Hurry to the observatory. Try to connect. Also, my mouse hasn't been working recently. This is not the game for right now. Whatever. You first put your laptop down on the floor to get it situated. Oh, and then there's this weird card system where, like, you have an inventory, but it's in cards. But it's, like, very meta. Anyway. But removing it from the root card causes all the... Hi! <laughs> Sorry. Removing it from the root card causes all the branches and leaves to be severed. Your items are dumped unceremoniously on the floor. See what you can observe. Ooh, fire and lightning, very, very frightening. Um, you're in a hurry, sure, but that doesn't mean you can't take a, take, a, take a moment to peek through the huge telescope. You find a gap in the clouds. It seems a flurry of smaller meteoroids is streaking steadily overhead. You're not sure what this means, but it's somewhat disconcerting. Stack laptop on grimoire to maximize elevation. Sure. You'll need every advantage you can get. Access library Wi-Fi network. See, look, it's like it's like GIFs. It's like it's like a story with GIFs. There are several signals being broadcasted from the laboratory, each of relatively decent strength. Okay, that right there, that's um, John Egbert that we're helping through things. So this like program lets you control things in the real world. Well, you know, in the, this book thing. One of them is mysteriously and quite conveniently unsecured, requiring no password. You select the signal and reconnect to the game with John. Um, oh, and the world's ending for him <laughs> in 36 seconds. 35, 34. I don't know if that's going to keep counting down. Like, if I, if I don't click off... No, it's it, it's a gif. Okay. Oh. Okay, so EB is Egbert. This is like, they have like a chat thing. TT is this girl named whatever I just... Rose. I'm back. Oh, I feel like he's a nerd. Open up and open my door. Not that it even matters. I think I'm probably dead no matter what. I don't like that voice for him. I think I'm probably dead no matter what. Patience, you still haven't used the new totem. This is my dog. I'm not sure if you can see him. I'm sorry. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I believe it will create the item on the punch card. So, what is it? Like, an apple or something? What good will that even do? We'll see. I found no evidence that anyone has successfully created the item. And the content of the card appears to be variable from session to session. In one instance, it was described as eggy looking thing. Sick. What does that even mean? Do we have enough of those building jewels to make it? According to Athenium, it is a free item. This speaks of its importance, in my view. Now, if you go, remove door from hinges. Sure. Okay, see, so this is Rose removing the door from the hinges in her game, but it's in his reality, but they're in the same reality or something. There goes the rest of your build grist. Put bathtub back. Oh, and she was moving the bathtub all over the house? I don't know. You probably should have just done this in the first place. Take totem to Alchemeter. Oh, and there's this thing that's not yet explained. To get those stupid blocks, got to get those stupid blocks out of the way first. The Colonel Sprite, which is what this is called, is getting awfully worked up about all this. Remove blocks. Um, you store the perfectly generic objects in your Fernalia registry, potentially to be deployed at a later time. Liam, stop it, stop it. Cool. Um, and now we're as John, take a bite of the apple. I don't think you should do that. Because, like, don't eat holographic apples? I don't know what's happening. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? It gave me an apple. A meteorite's coming. It's gonna crash into his home. 
Is all lost? Is all hope lost? Is it the end of the world nigh? Maybe. Okay, fine, eat the apple. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You're all gonna get destroyed by meteoroid anyway. Oh, that's your dad and all the paintings and stuff in your house. Eat the apple, eat the apple, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh no, oh no, you didn't eat it. Did you, did you just die? Oh, I think there is supposed to be sound right now. Maybe you guys can hear it. <laughs> End of act one. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hear it. Sorry if there's supposed to be sound. Um, let me know in the comments if you happen to know if there's supposed to be sound and I just suck at this. Cool, well I guess that's it, right? Like I don't want to click to end of act one if it's gonna be like, you know, weird. Okay, I think it's done. End of act one. Um, so this is where I should have left off the last thing, but I didn't know there were acts. Mubby. Years in the future, but not many. A wayward vagabond records a stuttering step in the sun-bleached dust. Oh. This is like a separate comic. Or something. Ooh! Wait, so... Whatever. Act two. Uh-huh. So, yes, this is part of the game. This isn't, like, some weird thing that- or game- story? Book? Whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a walkthrough of some sort of a video game. Um... Wait. Caveats and condolences. Okay, so this is a- Okay, so this is the game that Rosa downloaded that was allowing her to, come, like, do things. Um, also, resist the urge to brandish any copyright marks. My introduction will be sparse. There will be no majestic prose. Blubbering to the sails of a gal galleon as we embark on this voyage together. Nor will there be any ham-fisted prose whipping its limbs under a bedsheet. Okay, for that matter. I won't set the stage or dim the lights. This mood you'll see will be set soon enough. Since you are reading this, chances are you have installed this game on your computer already. If this is true, like many others, you have just participated in bringing about the end of the world. Don't beat yourself up about it. This was never anything you could have done to prevent it. Sure. The end is happening right now as I type and as you read. Liam, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I have come to understand that we were always doomed through our collective ignorance. And now you're further doomed by those few who know and struggle to flee. If you're lucky, you'll be among the smaller subset of the latter who are successful. What I mean is, while that game you insult is just one of the more, one more grinding slab of rock ceiling on our planet's crypt, it is also your only hope to live. I'm presently faced with the same conundrum as you. Though I speak with more experience, my own outcome is far from assured. I will play the game, as much more of it as there is to play. Record my findings here. If you wish to live, you'll do as I instruct. My condolences, TT. So TT is Rose, so TT lived. I'm guessing um, Egbert did not. Sad. Um, so yeah, the idea is, is that this game, the game that we're playing right now, um, is is what is happening. I feel like in theory there's sound. Oh, I hear something. It's like a heartbeat. Oh. This was John Egbert's house though, and his dad. But like creepy. This is right before everything blew up then. Oh, he sort of survived on his own island. <clears throat> so yeah, I guess the idea is that us doing this, we're doing the same thing as um, Rose. Okay, so we're, we're still alive then. 
The kernel divides, the two halves go their separate ways, leaving behind the sprite portion. Okay, so one went up and one went down. Okay. Creepy. Yeah, so I think it's these types of animations that didn't work last time because I didn't have Flash Player enabled because, you know, I'm a professional gamer. Okay, I think this is... I wish it would tell you when, like, it was done with the animation. Oh, boy. All right, so it turned into its own little thing. What is left of the sprite undergoes a mysterious transformation. For a moment, you thought you heard someone say, boy, as if whispered in the periphery of your awareness. It is probably just your imagination, though. You there, boy. Oh, look at this. Look at this. It's like a real game. To walk around. What? I can walk around? Uh, this is what I was missing last time. To walk around, use the mouse arrow keys or wasp keys. Okay. Wow. Wow, it's like a video game. This is what I was missing last time. Boy, open this door and walk through it. I wish this thing would stop following me. It's very creepy. It's very creepy. Can I can I click on lots of what's that? It looks different now. After you bit that apple, your whole house seemed to be transported somewhere. Then the apple disappeared, and Colonel Sprite underwent a transformation. Aside from the change in appearance, the transformation doesn't seem to have any relevant ramifications. I wasn't trying to click on the sprite. A small dessert tray, useless. I didn't mean to click on it again. I meant to read it. You there, boy. What? Boy, listen to me, boy. My name is John, you nincompoop. Boy who is John, do as I say. What would you like Boy Who Is John to do? I don't know what voice I'm giving him. So it's just going to keep moving until I like it. Obey my commands, John Boy. And those commands would be? I would like boy the boy to interact with his environment in a constructive manner, I assume. Maybe it could be a little more specific. Use this to reseal the opening there. If only putting the lid back on the cru crux dictor would undo all it's done. Alas, Pandora's tubes has been opened. The ghost clown do something with it. What is it saying? The ghost clown is called Colonel Sprite. Or rather, just the sprite now, I suppose. You can't do something with it at the moment. The only thing you could theoretically do with it is tier 2 prototype it, assuming that's still possible. Use this to reveal that opening there. Okay. Uh, you're not the one who's supposed to prototype it. The spurb server user is supposed to do that. Which is... Have the boy assess his current situation. I'm afraid I can't, ha I can't have the boy do that. Tell him to do it yourself. Very well. Okay. I don't know who's supposed to be talking right now. That instruction does nothing at the moment. What is the meaning of this rubbish? Okay, even you have to admit, this one's pretty funny. Heh heh heh. Could you please turn the controls over to a more competent user? This is... I, I'm so confused about who is talking to who. Like, I feel like, am I the... <sighs> Increasingly sophomore. Also, you, you almost spelled salad in there. What is the meaning of this rubbish? Okay. Uh, move this absurd edifice and exit your house, boy. This thing weighs a ton. You'd honestly be just surprised if the game cursor could lift it. Or at least without a significant expense of grist, which is like effort in this game. All the places for Rose to drop the infernal thing, more than ever you feel. What's the word you're looking for? Of course, house trapped or homestuck. Okay. Uh, stow lump of soot for future use, boy. This stuff is really dirty. You don't want it. Besides, you have it on good authority the significant portion of it is comprised of asbestos. Top of this urn immediately. That'd be disrespectful to your nana. You just don't won't do it, or at least not intentionally. You consider that it's fortunate she is no longer around to witness your sorrow. On the other hand, you would probably benefit from her utterly wisdom now. Wield these instruments of combat. Any one of these things would make a fine weapon. If only your strife specibus wasn't already allocated. Oh well. 
destroy these diminutive soldiers of merriment. It hardly seems worth it to go through the bother. You doubt you could get much for them at the garage sale, even. Maybe a grubby palm of pennies to kick in the nuts, and a kick in the nuts for the whole lot of them. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Vile, pay no mind to this filth. What is he even doing there? Playing ball or something? Clowns are stupid. Like, I don't know. This way, through the doors like you see in a cowboy saloon. Plunder chest. Would you like to play the game? Plunder chest. Would you like to play it? Okay. What is that? Is that blood? Examine this artwork. Dad was so proud when he drew this. He hung it up immediately and he stayed there ever since. That was one week ago. Peek in bowl of goo. Wherever your dad went, he seems to have left in a hurry. For all his absurdities you have to put up with, you sure wish he was here right now. That's sad. You there, boy. What? Boy, listen to me, boy. My name is John, your nincompoop. Boy, who's John? Do as I say. Obey my commands, John boy. I'd like the boy to interact in the... Okay, we... Yeah, this is... Cake mix! Sample powdered uncooked dessert. Back ye miserable wench. Stay thy cooking airborne particulates of temptation. That There was a lot of words there. Phone? This is a telephone boy. Use it. The phone doesn't work. Right, open this door now. Open these and try rifle through them for good. Some... Okay. Go back into the luncheon parlor. No, I want to keep going. Exit, boy. What is that? Ponder lawn amusement. Your childhood ne nemesis, the spring mounted pogo ride, sadly was not swallowed up by the void. It will have to wait for another day for its comeuppance. Comeuppance? It's comeuppance. Oh no, the swings. Boy, engage these mangled trapeze display. Looks like your swing set is toast. You really live fond memories and a moment of sorrow. following me. I don't know anything. You there, boy. I, I don't know. Admire this wall-mounted gauge. There's some mysterious force. Your house still seems to be powered even though the wires are severed. Quite bizarre. Can I do something with them? Fiddle with the bright sparkly thing. That sounds incredibly dangerous. John sensibly disregards your awful advice. You're like, I feel like I am the person saying boy. Or like the user is. I mean, I know I am user and user is Climb the dangling tree bubble. The trick handcuffs are still there. Thank God. Oh no, you're not about to try to climb them just now. Okay, fine. I wonder how much I missed before. Oh, this makes me so sad. I don't know what to do with myself. There's nothing out here. There's no point to being out here. I'm glad I came out here. Boy, quit all the scurrying around. Oh, is that what I'm supposed to do? Have I done everything? Okay. Boy, quit all the scurrying around. For the last time, this boy's name is John. Fine, John. Return to your quarters. Okay. You go back up to your bedroom, tiptoeing around this weird petroleum-based sludge. Now, John, respond to your friend unit. Show past her luck. Ooh, I'm back to TT. Um... John, are you there? Hey, yeah, I'm here. And not dead, I think. I know. I've been watching you scramble through the house like a lunatic. You should have answered me sooner. Oh man, sorry. I was looking around for my dad and I can't find him anywhere. Have you seen him? No, I'm sure he'll turn up. We have more important things to address right now. Yeah, like, where am I? I don't know that either. But I've determined your neighborhood was destroyed by the meteor. Wherever you were transported is safety from the impact. I've been reading reports in the news. Over the last few days, there have been many smaller meteor, co meteor collisions with people's homes around the world. They seem to be getting bigger. Yours is the biggest we've identified so far. Wow, okay. So then, I guess if this is all the game's doing, then the point is for us to save the world. Perhaps. Then we'd better get, go get moving and figure this game out. Yes, but wait. You should retrieve your PDA yet again. It will help you to retrieve to keep tabs on e it will help to keep tabs on each other while you investigate. I think I can get you closer to it if I can replenish our grist supply somewhat. There may be a way to recycle some that we've already used. Okay. I'll meet you out on the balcony. Wait, Rose, one thing. What? 
You never wish me a happy birthday. Uh, hello? I was working on something to send you, but I was running late with it. I didn't want you to think I believed meager well wishes alone would suffice for the occasion. That said, happy birthday, John. Oh, haha. <laughs> oh, jeez. That is silly. Anyway, thanks. First, take the fabric item on the floor there. The towel? Why? Alright, well, you're the boss. You kept Keptikologi, the towel. What now? Do as the purple text says. To the balcony! What purple... What? To, sure, to the balcony. Okay. John makes his way to the balcony, per your awkwardly worded request. Wait, take that blue wobbly thing. You whism whimsically decide to Keptikologi, the totem, which was used to create the apple tree earlier. John, recycle the grist as was dictated by your cohort. John can't do anything with the grist as of this moment. That is up to the spurb player. I see. So this is Rose playing. Yes, that will suffice. Rose deletes the perfectly generic objects. Six units of build grist are stored in your grist cache. So they use a lot of like gameplay lingo-y things in this, which is kind of funny since it's not really a game. Rose expands the grist to drag a new, expends the grist to drag a new plank from the balcony in the direction of the PDA. John, John, run across precarious platform swiftly. <laughs> I love that. John, run across precarious platform swiftly. John's not sure about that. It's a long way down. Boy, I said make haste on the narrow catwalk. <laughs> no. John is very nervous about the idea, and the stride and tone of your commands is starting to make him a little upset. Fine, proceed as your level of comfort dictates. Duddle, duddle, duddle. Ah, oh, you cautiously walk within the range of the PDA. Rose retrieves it. Now take it. Hoorah! Wait, something flew out and smacked. Oh, this little figurine smacked the, the thingy. You grab the PDA, launching one of the Harlequin figures into the night. You can kiss that one goodbye. Sure. Hell's less. Just one command will suffice. Th oh, I used two thingies. Looks like you're not the only one trying to locate your father after the disaster. Oh, these are all people trying to locate fathers or something? Sure. I, I don't know what to say. These boring men are uninteresting. What is this? So am I messaging with her? Oh, show pester log. John, are you okay? You seem a bit tentative. I'm fine, I guess. Since I got here, I feel compelled to do these weird things I don't really want to do. By some weird voice that I can't really even hear? I don't know, it's hard to explain. Perhaps the early symptoms of an anxiety disorder. Like, post-traumatic stress? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Well, if you can pull yourself together, there are a few more things we should try. Like prototyping the kernel sprite again. If possible, we should hurry. My laptop battery won't last forever. Okay, I'll go back inside. No, don't do that. Hop off this ledge on the car. What? No, that sounds incredibly dangerous. Arrow, 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 arrow. Now you're just being a pest. What turnip truck did you tumble out of anyway? Who are you? Years in the future, but not many. Oh, are you cold? An unsealed tunnel welcomes hot... Liam, sorry, my dog. Welcomes hot desert air into its stagnant depths. Oh. So was I the dude? This dude? Oh. Oh. Yes, I am. Or something. Cool. Arrow. Okay, so this is more stuff the TT's writing? I th oh, it's so long. Oh my goodness. Okay. Client user, are you the sir? Oh, I think this might actually be relevant. 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 Um, upon connecting with the client user, you, the server user, will be met with a control panel allowing to manipulate your co-player's environment. I think this is talking about rows. You'll find that you are allowed to deploy four items at no expense. Three of these are large, rather large machines. One is a punch card. It is quite possible that you've already deployed some of these items before reading this. In that case, and you have activated the machine called Crooks and that displays the countdown. That's what we did. 
which is what ended the world. You must proceed to section A100 of this walkthrough immediately. The life of the client user depends on it, which I think is John Egbert. Um, and if your co-player has activated the device in your environment too, then yours does as well. But if not, please refrain from doing anything with the crooks dexter. Um, aside from merely deploying it, this will buy us time to think of things through properly and go over the basics of the game before your soft, easily punctured head in the jaws of the lion. As mentioned, there are four items to, dis to consider. I almost said discover. Um, each playing a role in the process which appears a singular purpose to manufacture objects out of thin air. The designers of the game, judging by the language used, regard this process as a sort of alchemy. This may allude to complexities in the production process yet to present themselves, but for now, the variety of objects you are able to create remains quite limited. The items in question are the crooks Drurder. Crooks Drurder. Again, tread lightly with this one. The totem lay, the alchemator, and the pre-punch card. Oh my gosh, this is so long and I don't know if it's relevant. First, to play all these items in proximity to each other, sure. Removing the lid signals the moment of your life becomes a great whirling pandemonium, somewhat resembling the chaos of an especially ethnic wedding. Somewhere a seuss... What is happening? Um, y'all can pause this and read it if you want to. I'm just going to scan it and decide that it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, all right, cool. Arrow. I, I don't know what's happening, sorry. All right, we're back to Rose. Okay. She had some evil look or something. In the distance, meteorites fall with greater frequency. The fire in the forest burns so hot, not even the rain is putting it out. Check the status of battery. Uh, yeah. So you see, she's seeing him as if it's he's a video game, but they're friends. Battery's outside. The laptop battery's all right for now, but it won't last for long. Oh, that's the battery. Okay. If the power in the house doesn't come back on, you can think of one last resort. The small backup generator stored behind the mausoleum. Prototype sprite with Betty Crocker box. Oh no, what is she doing? Oh, what? Oh man, you're gonna use that? That sucks, what a stupid idea. We have to hurry along, I'm running low on battery power. But the cake mix, oh, that is so dumb. I don't know what's happening, okay. I doubt it matters, it, we might as well just use any old stuff laying around. Fine, I guess. Oh, I'm trying to put the cake mix on the thing? Why not? The sprite is playing hard to get. You guess that's what you get for originally prototyping it with some engine, something that engine en, engenders mischief and pranksterism. Do the plotted vegetable and set. It looks delicious. Pike down, you. This is Rose's Rose's decision, not yours. Prototype sprite with sassaker text. Oh, that's the sassaker. Oh yes, sweet. Now we're talking. See if you can distract it. I'll try to sneak up on it. John flail about in a distracting manner. <laughs> Great. The sprite finds the distracting manner in which you flail about to be rather distracting. The pesky sprite eludes you again. Come here, Liam. Not even the great colonel himself can outfox it. And narrowly missing with your attempt to create colonel sprite, you drop the massive tone. Um, the entire house rattles with the astonishing girth of the book. In the other room, Nana's ashes dump onto the sprite which, oh no, is caught unawares by the dousing. Inspect hag ash incident. You find the sacred urn toppled again. This time you, you're quite sure it wasn't your fault. The sprite is nowhere to be found. Remove Crux Duxter. Oh, remove Crux Duxter from doorway. Oh man, where to go? I can't find... Oh, oh man, where to go? I can't find it anywhere in the house. No time to worry about it. The next thing we can do is get your server copy of the game from the car. You need to connect to my client so I can repeat your steps and presumably join you wherever you are. We should do this quickly before my house burns down. Wait, there's a fire? There will be soon. Oh geez, so move this thing already. It looks like it requires a lot of grist to remove. To move. I don't have enough to relocate the door either. How much do you have? Zero. Uh, zero. Oh, huh. I thought about jumping to the car from the ledge earlier, but that sounds really dangerous. I have a better idea. Meet me upstairs. Do as the purple words say. 
You're about to head upstairs, but you thought you heard something behind you. It was faint, but you could hear a small, light-hearted chuckle along with the line, along the lines of a spirited hoo hoo hoo. Oh no! It looks like Grandma. Ignore the woman's antics. You're not sure you even saw a woman, let alone any of her hypothetical antics. But whatever it was you might have caught a glimpse of, it gave you the willies. You head upstairs on your way to the balcony. Your PD is acting up again. Indulge the device, but be curt with it. Show past her log. I don't know who TG is. Hey, bro, check it out. I'm working on some new rhymes. Dude, I don't have time for your nerdy raps. Come on, this is hells of ill just listen. It sounds like you don't believe me when I was about to get blown up, but I really was, and now I'm in some weird dimension that Spurb sent me to or something. Uh, and now, on top of that, I think I'm being haunted by my dead grandma. <laughs> For real? Yeah, it's true. But I'll talk to you later about it. I think I could just drop some sick rhymes all about this. Man, see, I just don't think all this rapping stuff is really as cool as you think it is. No, this will be dope. Check it. I No, I don't have time. Bye. Wait, wait. Armageddon's getting waged on us, but I'm uh, getting armed and dangerous. Sending men in space for saving us. See what play is more co courageous. Ben on Bruce, dudes reach a truce. Put their blow shoots to use and upsuck it. Affleck sack sacrifice could have to suffice. I'll flock it. Bro, be a stained glass saint up on cross getting hella Christ plagiarist. Bruce is like off of that clothflix. Nuff uh, what is happening? What? When a plan gone astray pays off a wasted craterous ash tray cater and Matt McConaughey's vague remainder dust weight. Uh, McConaughey wasn't even in any of those meteorite movies. He... I'll have to rap about, I don't know, Morgan Freeman or something. Being the president, they'll be called. Um, Obama's made it so that no one cares about black presidents in movies anymore. See, you've got to fill me on what's going on so I have something to rap about besides all the movies. Enough strange poetry from the red text. I don't know what's happening. You head out onto the balcony to find out what Rose has in mind. She's messaging you again. The purple text is less irrational than the red text. I feel like I'm that dude from The Office, um, the big dude who's just- Kevin? Is that his name? Did you find a mirror of yourself? My dog found himself in the mirror. Oh, buddy. Oh, he moved. I was gonna take a picture to show you guys. Sorry. Okay, um, I'm lifting the car up to the balcony. Whoa, okay. Once it is up, retrieve the game. Then I'll put it back down on the driveway. But the door is locked. Then break a window. But it's my dad's car. It's just a window. This is sort of an emergency. Otherwise, I promise I'll handle the car with velvet gloves. All right. Pick up car. Is, oh, okay. I'm like, is it supposed to be moving? Connection lost. Lol, and the car is gone. See, this is why you can't click too early. Because you don't know what's going to happen. Goodbye, car. R ridiculous folly. Inexcusable. Okay. Uh, what is happening? Am I, am I talking to people? Okay, whatever. You're inclined to argue, but hey, accidents happen. You double check your PDA to make sure if Rosa's really gone. Indeed, this seems to be the case. TG is still pestering you, of course, but another chum is now logged in as well. What color are the words that this chum says? Green. I don't know what to do with the voice. I don't, I don't know. I'm back. <laughs> Why not? Oh, hi. I went to investigate the explosion I heard. Was it by chance a meteor? Yeah. How did you know? Oh man, it's a long story. Anyway, are you okay? Did it blow up your yard or start a fire or anything? No, I'm fine. It landed a pretty good ways from my house and I went to look at it. And it's pretty big. But Beck doesn't want me to go near it. So I came home. He seems to be think it's dangerous. Well, gosh, he's probably right. It's a freaking meteor. You don't just run up and play with meteors. Uh. Anyway, what have you been up to, John? 
Oh, did you get my package yet? Oh. Uh, yeah, I was trying to get it, but Rose dropped my car into a weird, spooky, bottomless pit, and the package was in the car, and I'm really sorry about that. Oh, no! Well, okay, I guess I should start from the beginning. See, a meteor blew up my neighborhood. That's terrible, John. I'm so sorry. I mean, I'm okay, and my house is too, sort of. The game I was telling you about, Spurb, which I was playing with Rose, sort of transported me somewhere in the last minute. But now I'm trapped here, and it's weird and dark, and I can't find my dad, and I just have this car and the copy of the game in the pit, and I think I have to save the world from the apocalypse. Well, it sounds really crazy and scary, but it also sounds kind of exciting. I don't know, John, maybe this is your destiny. If anyone can save the world, I think it's probably you. Wow, you think so? Yeah. Well, okay, but... It's not even that simple. I was about to connect Rose to help transport her and save her from meteors and fire and stuff. But she lost battery power and I lost the game disc. So I think I have to get TGD's copy to save her. But that guy won't shut up about and stop rapping and stuff. Haha, <laughs> he's so silly. Yeah, anyway, I should talk to him about it. So, BRB. The green text was attractive. Now view the red text again. Oh no. Okay. When the film crew zooms where the president's at, I'm like, if that dude's bat black, I'll eat my hat. Turns out he is, and we're all like, damn, Drex has got gumption. And then we'll all flip out because he ain't shining shoes or something. It's called free emancipation. It's not pres election, like it's God ascension. It's Bruce Almighty. Whoops. Different Bruce from the one I just mentioned. Ugh. Can't explain to me why I ain't con condescension to think of it. What? Not even he can convey the intention of this quick spun wit. Rather defray all this tension settle on his lap while whittles split in some guy's eyes what he does and patronizes. I guess uh, I don't know what's happening. Stop rapping for a second, dude. I have something important to talk about. What's up? Rose is in trouble and needs some help. I was going to connect with her with Spurb, but I lost my copy. Okay. Also, she lost battery power. If she can get back up and running, she'll need someone with the game to get her out of there before her house burns down. So I think you should use your copy of the game to help her. My copy? <laughs> That's gonna be tough. Why? I lost it. It's a stupid story and I'd rather not talk about it. It'd be embarrassing, yo. I thought you said you had two? Well, yeah. One's my brother's copy. Ugh, we'll get his then. <laughs> Alright. He's not gonna be happy about that. Whatever. Also, you might want to read Rose's walkthrough to get up to speed on this. Oh, man. What? Nothing really. Look, all I'm saying is, the girl tends to lay it on kind of thick, you know? Rolls eyes. Okay, now we're back to Rose. Your laptop is out of battery power. But there's only one thing left to do. Time to make your way to the backup generator. Nick, laptop cozy to shield your laptop from the rain. That seems silly. But why not? Uh, I was trying to figure out how many acts there are in this. Or not acts. How many uh, pages there are in acts. I, I don't know. Um, so she closes it, puts the cute little thingy on it. Oh, or not. That would be such a waste of time. Besides, you already knitted one a while ago. You retrieve it from your knitting bag and apply it to your laptop, the Capticaloge, the laptop plus cozy. You Capticaloge, the laptop plus cozy. Equip grimoire to strife specibus. Sure. That would be incredibly ill-advised. There are some dark forces you ju don't want to mess around with. You understand this better than most. You put the book down. Recaptica- uh. Recaptica Loge, your items! Oh, my voice. Uh, you grab the knitting bag and grimoire, in that order. It's always a log logistical puzzle with your tree modus. The tree auto-balances, leaving the knitting bag accessible the root in the root card. Allocate knitting needles to strife specubus. Okay, you feel a lot more comfortable with this as a weapon. You're so handy with those needles. See, it feels like you should probably use them to fillet a swordfish. That's random. 
Um, you lose the root card in the process, severing the tree. Great. Hey, careful with all that stuff. Knit plush cuddle Cthulhu to soothe nerves. That would also be a preposterous waste of time. Besides, you're quite sure you've never heard of this creature called Cthulhu before. Seriously? Everyone knows about it. Um... Okay. Besides, uh, blah, blah, blah. however, many specimens of the zoologically dubious is you're familiar with, such as consult the grimoire. A flu, 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 foul patrician of misery. To hear his mammoth belly gurgle is to know the epic of joy has come to an abrupt end. There's so many acts, guys. And Narub Yiglith. Shame beast, king of grotesquerie, ride lord of the moist beyond hood. Hearing his melodious chirps and tongue clicks causes one's bones to explode. How fun! And of course, there's Ugloth, the deep one. Whenever he grinds his teeth, all the children of a random galaxy somewhere will frown continuously for 9,000 years span. Only children? He's the first and smallest of the smaller gods, appointed in servitude of the vile and fathomable pantheon of the middling gods, which caters to the whims of the noble circle of horrid terrors, horror terrors, an omniscient open up an order of the elite few, forever cloaked in the darkness of the furthest ring. What is happening? And then there's a strange page containing some rather mysterious notes on summoning procedures. Is it, though? You've never been quite sure of what these diagrams are getting at. A window? Types of windows? Take the items and proceeds downstairs. And it proceeds downstairs. Oh. So for the record, just in case you're like, how long is this going to go? I'm on page, or er, number, page number, three of six. This act ends page 758. So I have 400 pages. 450 pages left to go. That's fine. I'm good. I I'm, I'm in for the long haul. Um... You recap to collocate everything, the way you want it to appear, in the tree and head downstairs. You figure that's enough dilly-dallying. Try to get a move on. You wonder if the ride will ever let up. It's driven, it's driven since the month began. Perhaps long enough to forget its purpose. It's no longer even no, it no longer even knows to assuage fire. Somewhere, a zealous god threads these strings between the clouds and the earth, preparing for a symphony it fears impossible to play. So it threads on, delaying the rays of the conductor's baton. How you hate this season. So dramatic. April is the cruelest month, bleeding, breeding lilacs out of dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with the spring rain. American sports legend, Charles Barkley. Confront mother in hall. Surely your mother is lurking nearby. You should be prepared for an unpleasant confront. Oh, psych! What? It. What? I, love how, I didn't even see that that's what it is. What? There's this really cool dude, okay? He's standing around being all chill, like cool dudes are known to do sometimes. A cool dude like this is probably a really cool name. But he probably wouldn't just tell you what it was if you're asked. He's way too busy for that. Busy being totally sweet. You could always try to guess his name, and if you're right, he might nod ever so slightly. That's just a cool dude way of letting you know there might be hope for you yet. I love this. Enter name. This guy doesn't... Insufferable. <laughs> this guy doesn't have time for this sort of... Whoa, he got it with a katana! Try again. Dave Strider. Ooh. Oh, he's so cool, Dave Strider. Cool. Cool. Examine room. Oh, his room's so cool. Look at that. He's got katanas. He's got, like, computer. All set up for games and a DJ thing and, like, vinyl. Oh, he has vinyl. He's, like, so cool. Your name is Dave. Oh, I'm now playing as Dave. Cool. Your name is Dave. It's an unseasonably warm April day. Your bedroom window is open to let some air in, and your fan is cranked. Arguably, even more cranked would be your flat beats, which brings us to your variety of interests. A cool dude like you is sure to have plenty. You have a pinch out for spitting out unbelievably ill jams. Like sick jams? Hmm. With your turntables and mixing gear. You like to rave up bands no one's ever heard of, but you, you collect weird dead things preserved in various ways. 
You're an amateur photographer and operate your own makeshift dark room. You maintain a number of ironically humorous blogs, websites, and social networking profiles. And if the inspiration strikes, you won't hesitate to drop some fat rhymes and represent. What will you do? Like, is this TG? I don't know. Quickly retrieve arms from cinder blocks. What? Eh. Get the damn beta and save your friend's life. This is TG. So I, when I was giving him, like, a surfer voice, that wasn't really accurate because he's, like, really cool. <laughs> this notion strikes you as nonsensical. You can't imagine how a video game would save someone's life, and in any case, you're quite sure no one know, you know was in any danger. Anyway, these are your copies of the beta you received in the mail recently. You've labeled them with your name in bold red print to distinguish them from your bro's copies. Who labeled his in kind? They both say Dave, though? Neither of you really care about this game, or has any intention of playing it, but you'll be damned if you let that get in the way of your campaign one man up ship. One up man ship. Blate like a goat and pee on your turntable. You would never consider allowing any fluid, even remotely resembling pee, to touch your beloved turntables. That would risk breaking them, and in a world without the gift of your godly science just doesn't sound like a place you want any part of. While you're at it, you might as well wipe out human civilization with a meteor or something ridiculous like that, which will probably never happen. That sort of thing only happens in stupid idiot movies for stupid idiots. You will never fully contemplate bleeding like a goat for ironically humorous purposes at a later date. Examine closet. This is your closet. It's where you keep a lot of your stuff. Like that box. And that bottle of, what is that? Is that? Check the blue box. I can ignore that. This is the package your friend, John Egbert, sent you for your 13th birthday a little while ago. It now contains nothing except a note and a certificate certificate of authenticity, vouching for the genuine Hollywood memorabilia from the box, which, which the box originally contained, and which you are now wearing to be ironic, but also incredibly cool and in a way somehow intangibly related to the ironic nature of the accessory. You find exasperatingly, you find it sort of exasperating to explain these subtleties to people stupid people. The box also included a signed photo of Ben Stiller, which now proudly hangs above your closet. Proudly and ironically, like a cool dude. Take the box. Oh, his Captacologi looks so weird. You Captacologi the box through your hash map fetch modus. Your modus's current hash function resolves the end. Why? Resolve the index by evaluating each with a consonant at two. The total is divided by your number of cards, which is a remainder in the... Well, Examine the jar of unknown yellow substance in the closet. Oh. Of course. Oh, hell yeah! It's an unopened container of apple juice! You thought you were all out. It's like Christmas up in here. This is so great. You gotta tell John about this immediately. He'll be so excited. Take juice. I don't trust it. You kept a clue, Why? Is there math? Access Pester Chum and Pester John. In addition to letting your buddy know about this outstanding juice windfall, you figure you'll wish him a happy birthday while you're at it. In your own cool, sort of roundabout way, of course. Good thing you looked at the box he sent you, or you might have forgotten. You might as well ask him about that beta. The kid's been harping about it for weeks. It'd be kind of cool if it came for his birthday. He'd be one happy camper. <laughs> dope rhyme, so dope, ill beats can't i can't okay um show pastor log okay um hey so what kind of what sort of insane loot did you rake in today i got a little monsters poster it's so awesome i'm going to watch it again today the apple juice scene is so funny Oh hell, that's such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet, and it's Christmas up in here. Oh, uh, that's fine. But I have one question and then a word of caution. Have you ever seen a movie called Little Monster starring Howie Mandel and Fred Savage? But the seal on the bottle's unbroken. Are you suggesting someone put pee in my apple juice at the factory? All I'm saying is you don't think monster Howie Mandel has the power to do something as simple as reseal a bottle? Use your brain, I'm nuts. Why did the fat kid who, or whoever drank it know what pee tasted like? I mean, his reaction was not instantaneous. 
It was like the 15th day in a row Harry Mandel had peed in his juice. Okay, I can accept that. Monster Pelissa, pretty douchebags are cunning and persistent pranksters. Also, Fred Savage has a really punchable face. But who cares about this? Let's stop talking about it. Did you get the beta yet? No. Did you? Man, I got two copies already. But I don't care. I'm not going to play it or anything. The game sounds boring. Did you see how it got slammed in Gamebro? <laughs> Gamebro is a joke and we both know it. I think this is like from the beginning of the game, if I can remember properly. Anyway, yeah. Why don't you go check your mail? Maybe it's there now. Alright. Go online and view sites indicative of your interests. Sweet Bros Hella blog. You open the Hephaestus web browser and direct it to your ironically maintained blog, where you post monthly satirical reviews of Game Bro magazine. I. Dave reviews a magazine on a blog? Your latest post is a review of March issue. Cool. Glad that's a thing. You've been meaning to write a review for the latest issue too, but you've been sort of dogging it. Something about the game they're reviewing just doesn't strike you as ripe for satirical purposes. Okay. Um, in a new tab, you open another one of your sites. A webcomic ironically maintained through a satirical cipher vaguely similar to that of your blog. It's called Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. Oh my gosh, it's like a website. Oh my gosh, is this an actual website? Oh my gosh, this is an actual website. Um, no thanks. That's a lot. They, they made a website. Okay. You have legions of devoted fans, but most of whom are co totally convinced of your creative persona's sincerity, which is just how you like it. Check the latest page of Midnight Crew. You figure as long as you're chilling at your computer, you might as well see the, how that new MSPA story is going. MS Paint Adventures. Wait, that's what this is from. This is from MS Paint Adventures. Meta. My brain hurts. Oh, you haven't looked at it in a while. Midnight Crew. So this is... Okay, so in the first episode of this, I started off by saying that I was pretty sure that what I was playing, um, this Homestuck thing, is part four of this thing. The reason I think that is because on MS Paint Adventures website, this is a thing, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, which I might not be. And it seems like these were the first four parts, and that I was, like, starting with part four. I don't... No? Really? Anyway, your scheme's convoluted. What will you... Oh, okay. So this is... I don't know. Whatever. You are members of a sinister game and gang called the Midnight Crew. Your nefarious plots are serpentine in complexity. Your scheme's convoluted. You're planning a heist in your underground hideout. What will you do? Use Occam's Razor. Um, which is that the simplest explanation is usually the best, or something. Slide Slick uses Occam's razor to, oh, it's like an actual razor, to carve a circular hole in the heist plans, freeing it from the knife. Dude, they, they just cut the plans right here. That's, that's real stupid. You wonder what moron would jam the knife so hard into the table in the first place? Climb the ladder and exit the hideout, implement nefarious plots. This is such a sub thing. Okay, you punch it in the manhole cover, but it seems unbelievable. It has parked your get get the your getaway van on top of it. A familiar feeling stirs. That feeling's overwhelming, soul blinding rage. This is a story within a story, and like my head hurts. It's a sort of rage that that'll make a man feel totally justified in sporting an unnecessary elaborate assortment of fancy plays. Skip ahead a hundred pages or so. I was literally like, what if I just skipped through this? Cool. cool. You don't remember where you last laughed off, so you jump way ahead. You always forget to save your place in the story. Oh my god, this is like when I first played this. So there's technically a save feature at the bottom of the page right here, sort of. I don't really know what that means. Um, but yeah, so I had to rewatch my old video and then figure out where I left off to figure out how to start this. It looks like tempers have become short in this pressure cooker already. You speculate that the tipping point may have been an ill-advised motion from a game of 52 pickup. Save your place, read it later. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but I was like so tempted just to skip forward a few hundred pages. Things though, again, this thing is like 10,000 pages long and I'm on page 332. Anyway, it's fine. This is going to take a while, but it's really 
Even though your adventures began recently, it's already over 3,000 pages long. You just don't have the time for that. You catch up later. Besides, it looks like someone's pestering you. You're pretty sure you know who it is. Answer, chum. Uh, okay, so Tittle is the girl. Rose. In some cultures, the persistent refusal of a lady's invitation to play a game with her would be a sign of wanton disrespect. Either that or flagrant... Hmm. What? No. No, look. I'm busy, okay? I've got a lot of stuff on my plate. I'm sort of a big deal, okay? I know. Sometimes I wonder how you're ever allowed to pay for meals in restaurants. It must be hard to keep a low profile when you're always so overhearing... When you're always overhearing odd voices whisper, it's that guy who has a blog. Seriously? Dude to be worshipping me left and right. I can hardly walk down the street without stepping over torsos. Um, sure. Navigating the urban land landscape, I'm sure, is difficult enough without an obstacle course of... What? Perhaps adapting the art of parkour to your unique environment would help. <laughs> yeah, I mean, damn. Uh, where am I? Like, there's this scruffy little dude at my feet. An orphan or something? I don't know. Fl face flushed the pave. What? I'm like, dude, are you listening for a stampede of buffalo or something? He braves a look at me, then gives my shoe a little kiss and scurries off. Heavy as the crown. Yeah. Not kicking all of her twists in the face every day is my gift to the world, I guess. Breathtaking magnanimity. Magnanimity. Among other things. I just give and give. Indeed. Nary a jewel tumbles from your wish box of daily exploits, which I imagine does not sparkle. Oh, for sake. You're just lobbying for me to play that dumb game. Baseless accusation. Look, I'm telling you, Egbert is all about that game. He'll play it with you and probably be tickled about it. I know this very well. I cannot hasten his mail's delivery, however. Yeah, yeah. I'll hassle him more about it. And I'll look... And look how about this. Uh, if you ever find yourself in the position where your life depends on me playing that piece of game, then I'll pay... I'll play. What... Will that make you happy? More than you know. It perfectly mollifies my grief over the demise of chivalry. John, what are you doing? Stop doing nothing. Now we're back to John. I, I'm so confused, dude. Like, I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm like, ugh. Okay. Oh, my throat is so sore and dry. Oh. Okay. Meanwhile, in the present, in a place... Okay, so that was the past. In, in a place where present may be a concept of dubious merit, John is spacing out. But a vague and forceful j thought jolts him to his attention. Or maybe it's that bumping sound coming from the other side of the door. What is that? A thick, unpleasant fluid pulls from behind the door. Troubling. Investigate this. I like to imagine that this all-caps voice is um, Kratos from God of War. I mean, I've only seen the most recent one. Um, three? No, I don't think it has a number. It's just called God of War. I imagine it's kind of three. I think it's the fourth game. Anyway, and he's like, boy. There's a trail of this fluid in the hall leading to your room. Play some hauntingly sick beats. Oh, we're back to Dave. I'm so confused. You've had enough of this computer for a while. You feel like you've been messing around on it all week. It's time to get your jam on. You pull up your trusty something and prepare to get sick nasty. Oh my gosh, I can control this. Wait, is, is sound happening? Hold on. Is, is sound happening? I don't know what any of this does. And I kind of hate it. This is awful. Okay, left knob volume for turtles. What? Take some of the apple juice despite what John said. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. Those beats were so fresh they belong in the produce aisle. Is that what is what you're talking about? Soccer mom would be thumping for ripeness like melons, you know what I'm saying? After beats that fresh, it would certainly be it would be a crime not to reward yourself with a celebratory so wig. Oh. Oh no. You can't do it. John's got you all twisted up inside now. All you can think about is P. Damn you, Egbert. 
You re kept to the juice. Allocate sword to Strife Specubus. Your Strife Specubus is already allocated to the Black Kind Abstracus. Why are these words like this? There is no need to allocate it. You can wield your sweet ninja sword as a weapon once it is in your strife deck, but you will have to Capticologi it first before moving in there. Capticologi sword. The ninja sword occupies the same card as the juice. Expelling the juice from your Silidex. It splashes all over your turntables and copies of the beta. Get a towel or something. What? You head out to get a towel from the bathroom across the hall. Glance at one of the many radical puppets in your bro's collection and nod in approval. Is there anything not awesome about your bro? Awesome about your bro? You know you think not. I think so. I think there's there's at least two things on awesome about this guy's brother. Just in this image alone. Um, okay. You enter the bathroom. There's a damp towel on the floor you can probably use in this crisis. You stop to pay a little respect for one of your bro's boys up there. Hey, little man, how's it hanging? Come to Kaloge the damp towel. Why am I British? Hold on. You take the damp towel, expelling the box. Oh, because they're both five. Search the bathroom for something slightly less damp. Now, you just decide to bring the towel out into the toilet to make it less damp. Now it's just a towel. Take towel. Take the towel, grab the box again while you're at it. Clean up the juice. Kiri, Kiri. You clean up the juice with a towel and hang the damp bitter envelopes on your line to dry off. It's an awful accent and I really, really apologize for it. In the breeze of the fan, the betas jostle near the open window. But like, I'm going to go crazy otherwise, so, you know, I'm British now. It sucks. If anyone British is watching this, I'm sorry, I know it's not a British accent. This arrangement is a little disconcerting. If they fell out, it sure would be a stupid way to lose them. Turn off the fan. The crisis is easily averted. You can't imagine it will ever resurface later in any way, shape, or form. That bait is as good as yours. Forever. You probably should go past Egbert again. You wonder if he found the beta yet. You also might tack chat about your respective syllabuses and fetch Murdai if the topic happens to come up. You wonder if he's anywhere near as smooth with his Silidex as you are. Probably not. It's probably not even humanly possible. Suddenly a rambunctious crow flies in the open window and snatches the beta, possibly to make a nest with or possibly just for the sake of being a brainless featherly asshole. You yell at the bird. Stop. Sure. You accidentally launch a ninja sword and everything goes flying out the window, dead bird and all. No one can ever know about this. Look out the window. Well, you can kiss all that stuff goodbye. You feel sorry for the bird, but at least you planned on... You never planned on using the stuff... Do you that bear? What's that face? Beta ever. Anyway, now that bit of ugliness is behind you, you guess you can look forward to several more hours of messing around your room. Whoa, wait, what? Now we're back to Rose. For reasons. <sighs> I should stop doing a British accent, but it's so much fun. Prepared to descend the stairs to your living room. You are standing eye to eye with a familiar foe. Twenty foot tall granite statue of the mighty wizard Zazapan the Learned. Your mother had him installed through a hole in the roof which was heavy duty crane. Just look at this mystical gaze. To peer into these aloof glass and eyes is to arrest the curiosity of any mortal. To behold the wisdom concealed in the furrows of that venerable face is to know the ceaseless joys of bewilderment itself. Any man so fortunate as to catch a scant his merry twinkle or twitch of whisker shall surely have his all of his dreams fulfilled. I'm sorry, what? You find this grisly abomination utterly detestable. I remember what voice I was going to give her. I was going to give her Raven's voice from Teen Titans. Because she's all like, I have a grimoire. And it's like pretty epic, I guess. But like also like Cthulhu and everything. Psychoanalyze mother's love of wizards. There's nothing to psychoanalyze. Your mother clearly has no affinity for these damnable things. And I'm now doing vocal fry in order to achieve this. She only, that's what this is called. This little voice right here that I'm doing. Vocal fry, I think, maybe. She only collects them to spite you. If anything, she finds them even more repellent than you do. She's just a committed woman. Go downstairs to the kitchen back door. 
You descend to the living room area of your home's expansive open layout. There's a the sound of rushing water beneath the floor. It Maybe I should just do normal voice. There's a the sound of rushing water beneath the floor. It tends to strike guests as a strange presence in a living spa. That's a giant... What? I was reading and didn't look up. That's a Cthulhu. What? That's a giant... Okay. There's a front door. Um, and apparently there's rushing water beneath the floor, and I'm used to it. For reasons. Um, there's the front door. But hopefully there's no need to make the long trek around the house in the rain. You might as well see if you can slip through the kitchen and out the back unnoticed. A few mother's solid copper vacuum statue. Okay, but it's bronze, not copper. Which is totally different. But it wasn't always. A while ago you gave this as an ironic gift to your mom for Mother's Day. You even customized it with a drink holder for, to support one of her ubiquitous alcoholic beverages. I see, I see. She liked the gift so much, she bronzed it and put it on this pedestal. She even left it plugged in so it can still be turned on now and then, but never do any cleaning. It never leaves the display. Sometimes at night, when you're in your room, you can hear it wailing from downstairs. She must know you can hear it. She's completely deranged. Grab the Eldritch Princess. That's too big to cap to Kalogi. Not that you'd want to move it anyway. The pretty princess doll has been sitting there for months, ever since your mother got this abomination for your birthday as a totally passive-aggressive gesture. I love this, like, weird relationship between Rose and her mom. So weird. You decide to make it less, much less abominable by knitting Her Majesty a new head and arm so it used to be a princess. And you made it Cthulhu. Now it brings a mischievous smile to your face whenever you walk by. Your mother hasn't removed the dog doll yet. Probably would never will. She'd never be the one to blink first. Acquire umbrella for protection from elements. Sure. You're going to have a hell of a time accessing that card when you need it. You guys will just cross that bridge later. Peek inside kitchen. The liquor bottles are out in full force. Mom is surely nearby. Investigate richly colored object in middle of screen. That would be the refrigerator. I was talking about the one thing below it, but it's fine. Whose services have customarily served as battlefield for the chilly siege of passive-aggressive one-upmanship. The strong you did of your cat Jasper's when you were younger, along with the poem about him. Your mother bought this ostentatious $15,000 frame for it, had it welded to the door. That's a waste of everything. Using the colorful magnet letters, you recently left a succinct message, which may or may not have been directed toward anyone in particular. But you couldn't find the letter W, so you just stuck two V's together. Shreve! It's a shreve! It's definitely not a shrew. It's a strew. It's a strew. Your mother then purchased this fresh pack of W's and left them there for your convenience. Appreciative of the thoughtful gesture, you left her a sincere thank you note, which you had legally notarized, then marked with a drop of blood. What is this? But part of it was touching the floor, so your mother was kind enough to lift the lower portion of the document with a velvet pillow. Attach a W to face as a fake mustache? <laughs> oh no, I don't know. This is incredibly silly. You think? And you're not sure how it fits into your campaign against your mother. Or getting your computer back online to escape your doom. But it's hard to resist getting a little silly sometimes. Especially when you're absolutely positive no one's watching. Except I am. Mwahaha. <laughs> Capitaloge W. Sure. Oh my gosh, this just keeps going. I might not make it to the end of the act. Okay, that unsightly void in the W pack won't do. Yeah, that would bother me. Nor will it. Nor will the gash in the plastic. You deposit 12 cents in its place, which is your approximation of the letter's value. You also vow to return later and neatly sew the plastic side. It's so petty. It's so petty. I love it. Uh, think of ways to one-up mother. Can, can we get back to the storyline? Like, I know that normal books go on random tangents, but oh my god. This thing is 10,000 pages long. And now I can see why. You now wonder how to address the pillow situation. It seems the woman has you at a clear disadvantage. Perhaps by slipping a fresh doily under the pillow will do the trick, or maybe spilling out 
spilling a bit of Worcestershire sauce on it, then having a dry cleaner returned with a li- with a laboriously ingratuity ingratuity apology note. Now there's not no time for anything like that, or maybe just thinking aloud here. You could use the entire pack of W's as M's. Oh yes, that would burn. But you've already done something with the W pack, and there's no need to go back and gil- gild that lily. This is delicate business, and the pillow is screaming for rebuttal. Capticologe, velvet pillow. I, I don't know what's happening. You decide to take the velvet pillow and, and, and lovingly embroider a poem in praise of motherhood on it. Hopefully, you can pull this off before she notices it's gone. But it causes your tree to be pretty unbalanced. It surely will auto balance itself in a moment. I've gone back to this weird accent. Um, just like that, the umbrella has become ex- accessible in the root card. It's one of the things you love about tree modus. The happy su- surprises. Head out the back door. Okay, enough's enough. Time to get go- ah! You don't know how she does that. You're never safe in this house. That's your mom, I guess. Um, and all of the things to be doing during a power, power outage. She's up to her ironic housewife- at routine again. That mop bucket doesn't even have any water in it. What an absolute mad lad. Hop over the counter. Landing in a roll. This bird's gotta fly. Youth roll. Great. Me. Lousy goddamn stupid wizards. Meanwhile, in the past again. Okay. Okay. I think I'm gonna end this here. I made it like another hundred pages. At this rate, I'm never going to be done. Um, this game is hilarious. But, uh, yeah. I, I gotta stop because, like, my voice is going to die. Um, if you liked this, then like it or something. I don't know. Let me know if I should continue because, you know, I could just read this silently in my own head and I guess that'd be easier. But if, you know, there's even a person who's interested, then great. I'll continue. Why not? It's it's kind of hilarious. Um, I understand that the fandom behind this game can be a little weird sometimes. So, like, don't be weird on me. I'm doing my best. Um, yeah. Anyway, hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye! Ball! Whoa!